In this video, we're going to be talking about intro to number theory, and in part one, we're going to be going over the greatest common divisor and least common multiple. And then in part two, we will be going over modular arithmetic, and then from there, we're going to be going into intro to cryptography. So first, we're going to talk about the basic concepts of number theory. Number theory is just the study of integers, one, two, three, up to infinity, and then the negatives as well. All of these integers besides one are either prime or composite. Prime meaning that they can only be divided by themselves and one. Composite meaning that they are multiples of primes. And this is called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. One concept that we need to know about for number theory is factorization. Factorization is when we take a composite number and we break it up into its primes. For example, 120 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. This is pretty basic stuff, but this video is just going to be review and then we'll build on from there. Another concept that we need to know about is greatest common divisor and least common multiple. And in this video we're going to be going over the Euclidean algorithm for finding the GCD. And then we're going to find out that to find the LCM is pretty easy once we know the GCD. Another concept that we need to know is that if two numbers have a GCD of 1, then they are considered relatively prime. So for example, 12 and 25, a GCD of 1 just means that they have no common numbers that divide them besides 1. So they are considered relatively prime. We also need to know modular arithmetic, and modular or mod is just a fancy term for remainder. So in third grade we talk about remainder when we're dividing numbers. So for example, 127 mod 19. How many times does 19 go into 127? 6 with a remainder of 13. We don't really use this after third grade, but once we get to number theory, we find out that mod is actually a very useful function. And especially for um, cryptography, mod is very useful. But modular arithmetic will be covered in the next video. One way to find LCM is by factorization. Let's say we want to find the LCM of 8, 9, and 21. First we factor 8. 8 is equal to 4 times 2, and 4 is equal to 2 times 2. This is the factorization of 8. 9 is equal to 3 times 3. 21 is equal to 7 times 3. And if you notice that the at the end of all these branches is prime number. So all these are prime numbers. And then when we're finding the LCM, we want to look for common primes. So 9 and 21 have a common prime of 3. So we can cancel out one of them and make it into just 1, 3. Say this number had a, a 2 in it, in its primes, we could cancel one of these 2's. So once we cancel all we can, then we go and multiply all the primes out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. And we only have two 3's because we cancel one of them. So the LCM of 8, 9, and 21 is 504. Now another way to... We're still factorizing. Or we're still factoring. This is just another way to write it. I think it's easier without drawing out trees for each number. We write 8 as 2 to the third times 3 to the zero times 5 to the zero and then these are to the zero power is just one and we could do it for all the primes we could go out all the way to all the primes but we don't need to so 8 is just 2 to the third 9 is 3 squared 21 is 3 to the first times 7 to the first and then we find the highest power in each of these columns so the highest power in this column is 3 the highest power in this column is 2, the highest power in this column is 0, and then the highest power in this column is 1. So once we do that, then we just multiply the columns. So LCM is equal to 2 to the third times 3 squared times 5 to the 0, which is just 1, times 7 to the first, which is just 7, equal to 504. Okay, here is the formula for finding the least common multiple of two numbers. LCM of A and B is equal to the absolute value of A times B over the greatest common divisor of A and B. For example, LCM of 48 and 180 is equal to 48 times 180 
over the GCD, I should have filled this in of 48 and 180, which is equal to 8,640 over 12, 720. So obviously for this formula, we're going to need to know the GCD, but we're going to find out that GCD is actually very efficient to find. So the Euclidean algorithm is the way that we're going to solve the, we're going to find the GCD. So Euclid said that if A is greater than B, then the GCD of A and B is equal to the GCD of A minus B and B. So here is pseudocode which represents this equation. And note that this is the inefficient version. Don't implement this. I'll show you the efficient version on the next slide. And you'll find out why it's inefficient in a second. So we have a function gcd, and it takes in two values, a and b. If a is equal to b, we return a. If a is less than b, we swap the two values. And then from there, we return gcd of a minus b and b. So like I said, it's just this in code. Here's an example. The GCD of 354 and 180. Here we have A is greater than B, so we don't swap, we just subtract 180 from 354, we get 174 and 180. Now A is less than B, so we swap. Here's our swap. Then we go back, and now we subtract 180 minus 174, 6 and 174. A is less than B, we swap, and then from there we're just going to keep subtracting 6, subtracting 6, all the way down until we get 6 is equal to 6, A is equal to B, we return A. And so A, or 6, is the GCD of these two numbers. But when we do this, we see the problem with this algorithm. Imagine this is a 100 digit number and this is a very small number, this is never going to finish. This is going to do so many iterations. But if we realize what is all this equal to, this is just doing the same thing that 174 mod 6 is doing. And the algorithm for finding mod does not subtract over and over. So if we implement this using mod instead of subtraction, it's going to be very efficient. And here it is, GCD of A and B, and this is the efficient version. If B is equal to zero, we return A, otherwise we automatically swap, and then we do B comma A mod B. So here it is, 1071 and 462. We divide 462 and 171, we get two with a remainder of 147. So now our remainder is going to be our new B, and 462 is going to be our new A. So we do the same thing, divide, the, divide this by this, divide 462 by 147, 3 with a remainder of 21. So 21, our new B, 147 is our new A. Do it again, 21 goes into 147, 7 times with a remainder of 0. The remainders are B, and now we have B is equal to zero, so we return A. 21 is the GCD, 1074 and 462. And this runs very fast. It runs in big O of log A plus log B time. And if you don't know big O notation, don't worry about it. We'll go over it in a future video. But this basically just says that the number of iterations that this loop or this function that we'll do does not exceed the total number of bits in A and B because remember that in computer science terms log it always refers to log base 2 whereas in math terms we're using talking about log is log base 10 but whatever so say A and B are two 64-bit numbers this is not going to do any more than 64 plus 64, which is 128 iterations. And 128 iterations to find the GCD of two 64-bit numbers, that is very, very fast. So that is Euclidean algorithm for finding the GCD. And in the next video, we will be talking about modular arithmetic. Thanks for watching.